Tonight, an update in the battle over whether a citizenship question should be added to next year's U.S. Census. A Texas judge has tossed parts of the so-called Sanctuary Cities lawsuit against the San Antonio Police Department and Police Chief William McManus. Seguin police say a woman lived with her mother's decomposing body for three years. Tonight, neighbors are reacting to that disturbing allegation. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9, streaming from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. New tonight, President Donald Trump is dropping his bid to include a citizenship question on the 2020 census. Instead, he's issuing an executive order to obtain citizenship data through other means. He's directing every federal department and agency to provide the Commerce Department with all records pertaining to the number of citizens and non-citizens in the country. This announcement comes after weeks of back and forth. Late last month, the Supreme Court blocked a citizenship question from being added to the 2020 census. And then just last week, the president said he was considering an executive order to make sure that question was included. Recently, we aired a story explaining the importance of the census, how the information gathered is used. Right now on our website, we break down this once a decade survey. You can find that story on ksat.com slash news at nine. Protective orders. They're meant to protect someone from a person who is harassing or abusing them. A divine woman who was found dead this week had a protective order against her boyfriend. The man police say kidnapped her. This sparked the question, was that protective order enough? The victim's brother said no. Tonight, one local judge is weighing in, reminding domestic violence victims that a protective order is a valuable tool. Sarah Costa explains the process and how to, the orders aim to keep victims safe. It's the latest story in our series, Loving in Fear. It's not a bulletproof vest, but it is a tool. Bear County Civic Judge Mary Lou Alvarez says protective orders placed against abusers are important, empowering tools for domestic violence victims. She says she doesn't want victims to be discouraged from applying for protective orders because she says it's an important step that could land an abuser in jail if violated. It puts it in black and white. It's not going to keep everybody away. Not everybody is going to be mindful of that. But a lot of people are. Alvarez explains there are three types of protective orders in Texas. A magistrate emergency protective order called a MEPO, where a magistrate judge can request this order in a criminal case after a defendant is charged with some type of domestic assault. A temporary protective order and a two-year protective order, these are short and long-term protections issued by the civil court once the victim applies for them. Every process is different depending on where you file, but you'll always need any police report case numbers or evidence of abuse. Look at my call log. He called me. If your alleged abuser denies the abuse accusations, you could end up in court fighting for the judge to grant that order. She says protection orders are case by case, but most offer similar protections. Well, can't harass, can't threaten, can't assault, can't, you know, keep a physical barrier X number of feet, X number of yards away from school, uh, residence, work. The minute those protections are violated, she says it's imperative that the victim call police. This could lead to an immediate arrest. Alvarez says once a protective order is in place, victims must also make safety plans. Make sure your neighbors know that you have a protective order in place. Make sure your neighbors know what kind of car your batterer could, could be driving. Now, Maya, first-time violators of those protection orders can face Class A misdemeanors, which is up to a year in prison and up to a $5,000 fine. Now, if those violations include any type of, of assault, um, Alvarez was telling me that abusers will be facing felony charges. And anytime we do a, a story in this Loving and Fear series, we want to let people know that there are resources out there. So what resources are available to victims for them to get this protective order process started? There are so many resources, nonprofits, shelters, legal teams that assist people, you know, um, for free. And you can find all of those resources on our webpage. Um, on our domestic violence webpage, just go to ksat.com. All right, too many to name here, and that's a good thing. Thanks, Sarah. Now to a bizarre story raising a lot of questions tonight. A woman in Seguin accused of living with her child in the same house where her mother's decomposing body had been for three years. 
Neighbors reacting to that news today, calling it scary and shocking. Investigators say 71 year old Jacqueline Creighton died on the floor of her bedroom three years ago after a fall. They say her teen granddaughter and 47 year old daughter continued to live in that house, leaving Creighton's body to decay inside. This week, police found the remains and charged Delissa Creighton with injury to a child. Neighbors say the woman kept to herself most of the time. We would rarely see any cars there, and when she would come, it'd be late at night. Seguin ISD says Jacqueline Creighton worked for the district as a secretary and teacher's aide for years, at times also working with children in special education. In another twist in this case, Delissa Creighton is a former Seguin Police Department dispatcher. Her teenage daughter was now in the care of family members. Charges against a Madison High School student accused of stabbing two girls, killing one of them, have now been dropped. The Bear County District Attorney's Office says new evidence shows the 16-year-old acted in self-defense. Police say on March 1st, 18-year-old Caitlin Castilleja and another 18-year-old went to the teen's home and confronted her over social media exchanges. It turned into a fight, and at some point, police say the 16-year-old stabbed them both. Castilleja died. The teenager had been in custody since her arrest for that stabbing and was facing serious charges, including murder. Now let's turn to the 9 at 9. These are some of the biggest stories making headlines around the world, around the country, and right here at home. A Texas doctor says she was humiliated after she was told to cover up when boarding a plane. Investigators searching for answers in an explosion that destroyed a fast food restaurant. And the site of a nuclear disaster is now officially becoming a tourist destination. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. The funeral for a Kendall County deputy hit and killed by a truck was held today. Deputy Carlos Ramirez died last week while conducting a traffic stop on I-10. Ramirez's death was the first in the line of duty in 20 years for the department. Ramirez will officially be laid to rest next week in El Paso. A Houston doctor says she was humiliated after she was asked to cover up before boarding an American Airlines flight. This was the romper she was wearing for that flight to Jamaica. An airline employee asked the doctor if she had a jacket. When she said no, she gave her a blanket to wrap around herself. American Airlines has since apologized and given the woman a refund. Here at home, human remains discovered along Solano Creek at Tobin Park Trailhead. A passerby called police after he saw vultures circling the area and later found a skull. Officers who arrived at the scene were able to verify the skull is human. Investigators also found a second decomposed body about 75 yards away. At this time, it doesn't appear to be any signs of foul play, but once again, we're very early in the investigations. A North Carolina KFC left in ruins after an explosion this morning. An employee told police he smelled gas while closing up the restaurant. The manager tried to turn off the gas and call for help, but it was too late. Luckily, there were no injuries. According to police, the explosion could be felt two miles away. Officers are still trying to figure out exactly what caused it. A Michigan woman facing charges after allegedly stealing a police cruiser and crashing it. An officer was parked while responding to a call when a woman jumped in and took off. She then led police on a chase, reaching speeds of up to 100 miles an hour, even driving against traffic at times. The driver eventually crashed into another SUV. No one was seriously hurt. Police say the woman told them she just wanted to have some fun. A ring security camera captures the moments a Florida man steps outside and is bitten by a venomous snake. You can see the bite marks the water moccasin left behind. First responders were called out to administer anti-venom. The man in the video is doing okay. The site of the world's worst nuclear disaster set to become an official tourist attraction. Ukraine's president signed a decree setting plans for new walking trails and enhanced mobile phone reception at Chernobyl. Much of the area has been open to tourists since 2011, and there's been a sharp rise in visitors since an HBO miniseries about the tragedy aired earlier this year. Take a look at this. An Arizona driver crashes into a cactus, causing the plant to go right through the windshield. Police say the man suffered only minor injuries, but he was arrested and charged with a DUI. An ordering mix-up leaves a Georgia woman with a marijuana cake instead of a Moana cake. 
The 25-year-old birthday girl is a Disney fan and wanted the cake to celebrate the 2016 animated film Moana. But the person who took her order misheard, and she ended up with this. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. I got a lot of questions about that cake. I just don't. But we got more important things <laughs> True. Uh, to talk about than whatever happened there. <laughs> Katie Blake joining us tonight. The big weather story, of course, yes. is Barry. And we're going to talk about it because it's going to, to have big impacts on our neighbors to the east in Louisiana. Uh, really, for us, it's going to be very minimal impacts. But uh, portions of Louisiana over the past couple of days, they've already had flash flooding issues. Uh, they've had more than enough rain. Uh, you can see here, this is video from, I believe, yesterday after heavy rains moved through uh, really before Barry actually kind of got a little bit more organized. That really happened last night and today, but there's already been flooding issues in New Orleans and South Louisiana and really the heaviest rain, the most widespread rain that will be coming late tomorrow and into Saturday. So here's a look at the Gulf of Mexico. We've got rain bands that extend up into Mississippi, even into Tennessee, but the center of circulation of tropical storm Barry is still off in the Gulf of Mexico, south uh, south of New Orleans there. It's still a tropical storm. Uh, maximum sustained winds 45 miles per hour. It's been gradually trying to get its act together a little bit more, gradually strengthening. Uh, we've got hurricane and tropical storm warnings posted along pretty much the entire coast of Louisiana and Louisiana is expected to be kind of the hardest hit by Barry. So as we go into tomorrow night, early on Saturday, that's when landfall is expected along the middle Louisiana coast. And then through Saturday night into Sunday, the system will continue to move north, weakening, making it all the way up to the Tennessee River Valley by the early part of next week. So rainfall totals, this is where it's going to get ugly for South Louisiana from Baton Rouge over to New Orleans, even up closer to the I-20 corridor. Some spots could see 10 to 15 inches of rain. Big concerns not only with storm surge and the flooding, flash flooding, but also flooding of the Mississippi River, Myra, which is already uh, getting to flood stage, a little bit yeah. above flood stage. So big issues there for us going to be pretty quiet this weekend. Few clouds, but we'll talk about what you can expect here at home coming up. All right, more heat. Yes, of course. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Uh -huh. San Antonio has 54 highly rated schools. That's according to data collected from greatschools.org. Some highlights found in the data zip code 78258 stands out with eight top rated schools. 78258 is located in the Stone Oak area north of 1604. Five schools were top rated in the 78259 zip code. That area is also on the north side, north of 1604 and east of Highway 281. To view ratings for schools in your area, just go to ksat.com and click on this story. A lot more ahead on KSAT News at 9 tonight, including a new report into the deadly 2017 mass shooting in Las Vegas. It's recommending changes be made within the city's police department. And a new development tonight at the Sanctuary City's lawsuit filed by the Texas Attorney General's Office against the San Antonio Police Department and its chief, William McManus. Those stories and more after the break. April 15th is World Art Day, and our city is one great big art exhibit. But AARP in San Antonio thinks today should be your day. So connect with us at our dancing and gardening events, or explore your neighborhood. We're working with you to make it more livable for everyone. We're here in our community helping you live la vida buena. So give life a splash of color, and take on today and every day with AARP in San Antonio. Aziz Oriental Rug and Porch would like to thank San Antonio for 30 years of business. And now, it's time to retire, and that means we are having the biggest sale in our store's history. We are taking up to 80% off everything in our store, every style, color, shape, and size. After traveling all over the world, we have developed a remarkable and elegant collection of traditional and contemporary style oriental rugs. Don't miss out on this once-in-a-lifetime deal. Visit our showroom today while inventory lasts at 2102 North Loop, 1604 West. Have you been noticing dragging doors in your home, cracks in your walls, or cracks in your floor tiles? This could be signs your foundation is sinking. Call the company you can trust, Baird Foundation Repair. Their certified specialists will design a plan to bring your home back into good shape. All backed by a lifetime transferable warranty. Let Baird help you restore value to your most important investment. Call Baird Foundation Repair today. Doing things right the first time. A family tradition. 
A Travis County judge has tossed out sections of a lawsuit filed last year against San Antonio Police Chief William McManus, the department and the city by the Texas Attorney General's office. The so-called Sanctuary Cities lawsuit filed in late November. It accuses McManus of limiting the enforcement of immigration laws in December 2017 when he decided to release 12 suspected undocumented immigrants found inside of a tractor trailer on the city's east side. That's instead of turning them over to federal immigration officials. A judge has dismissed some of the claims following a May hearing. Attorneys for the city argued that the lawsuit lacked merit and that some of its claims were barred because the incident took place while the enforcement of SB4 had been temporarily halted. SB4 required law enforcement agencies to cooperate with federal immigration officers. Meantime, a spokesman for the attorney general's office released a statement on the issue saying in part, quote, we respectfully disagree with the trial court's ruling because the federal trial court's injunction was overturned. It cannot prohibit the state of Texas from enforcing SB4 during the period it was wrongly enjoined, end quote. Let's turn now to some of the other big stories people are talking about tonight. The Las Vegas Police Department releasing a report about the 2017 mass shooting that killed 58 people at a country concert. The 158 page report doesn't draw any conclusions about the motive of that attack, but it does look into the, the department's response and analyzes the challenges that arose from personnel, equipment and agency procedures. It makes dozens of recommendations for changes to department policies and procedures. The second largest teachers union in America is suing Education Secretary Betsy DeVos. The American Federation of Teachers Union says the Department of Education has mismanaged the public service loan forgiveness program. That program grants teachers and other public service workers loan forgiveness after they make 10 years of payments. The union says the Education Department has improperly rejected applications and has violated their constitutional right to due process. It's time for weekend picks. Are you looking for something that'll get the whole family out of the house this weekend? Well, I have a few things that might just do the trick. First up, a superhero movie that the whole family will enjoy. HEB Cinema on the Plaza is showing Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse for free on Friday, 8 to 10. And that's happening outside the Tobin Center. And calling all festival goers, gather around for good music. The next four Fridays are the 26th annual Balcones Heights Jazz Festival. It'll take place at the Wonderland of the Americas Amphitheater from 7.30 to 10 p.m. And it's completely free. Outdoor seating is first come, first serve, and there will be food and beverages available for purchase. And if you're like me and you don't want to cook this weekend, well, there's a spaghetti dinner happening this weekend. The 22nd annual spaghetti dinner is Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Christopher Columbus Italian Hall. Tickets range from $5 to $9 and are available online or at the door. And all proceeds go to the 100 Club of San Antonio to benefit children who have lost a first responder parent in the line of duty. For more on these events or the full calendar, you can visit ksat.com. For The Nine, I'm Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Katie Blake is back, and we have talked about how Barry's not going to have much impact on us. Yes. Yeah. So we're wondering about the weekend weather. <laughs> it's going to be hot. We're, we're going to be stuck in the mid to upper 90s. May see some high clouds from Barry in the sky starting tomorrow and continuing through the weekend. And if you're in our far eastern counties uh, on the coastal bend, maybe a stray shower from Barry by Sunday. But that's going to be about it. Here in San Antonio, things will be quiet. And that includes at the Balcones Heights Jazz Fest on Friday. Mostly clear skies, temperatures falling from the mid to upper 90s into the low 90s. Once we get closer to 10 uh, o'clock or so, we should be in the upper 80s. Here's a look at Futurecast heading into the weekend. Keep your eye on the right side of the screen. Uh, that is where Barry will be hanging out again, moving through Louisiana and just tossing us, I think, some high cloud cover now and then through the course of Friday and the upcoming weekend. So as Barry continues to move north uh, and east, maybe it tosses us, I think, a stray shower on the coastal bend by by Sunday. Uh, otherwise, that'll be about it. We'll be watching for that to move away to the northeast. Once we get past 
Barry this weekend and it moves away. We're going to have upper level high pressure move in and that spells uh, another stretch of some quiet and hot weather for us tonight. Mostly clear skies, north winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, 74 year low temperature. Uh, tomorrow will be another hot day, mid to upper 90s for your high temperatures, mostly sunny skies, north winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We should have a little breeze with us at times tomorrow so that uh, will keep it from feeling too sticky out there. Heading into the weekend, there are those high clouds you may see now and then a 10% chance of a stray shower down on the coastal bend on Sunday. Otherwise, that heat high starts to build in a bit more next week and that'll keep things sunny and hot. Myra. All right, thanks, Katie. I think now's a good time to remind everybody we are right here in the middle of the KSAT 12 newsroom. It's a busy night, so that's what you're hearing in the background. All right, now it's time for Throwback Thursday. This is the series here on the nine where we take a look back at the people and the places that have helped shape our community. For more than a century, University Health System has been providing care in the San Antonio area. RJ Marquez takes a look back at the history of the hospital system and its impact on families across South Texas. Since 1917, the University Health System has stood tall as a beacon of the medical community across San Antonio and South Texas. The Robert B. Green Memorial Hospital was University's first location and still stands today. The first patient was admitted to the Robert B. Green on February 2nd, 1917. So we're in our 102nd year anniversary. San Antonio was in the midst of a population boom when the hospital was built. It served people who didn't have private health care. Around this time, an influenza epidemic hit San Antonio. The hospital really cared for a lot of people in 1918 and saved a lot of lives because it was here at the time. The hospital treated residents for decades, but funding was inconsistent for years. University Health System saw a major change in the 1950s when voters approved the creation of the Bear County Hospital District, one of the first in the state. The vote, which created a tax to fund the hospital, gave University Health a new life and new direction. In 1965, officials broke ground on the Bear County Hospital in the medical center. The decision was made to ultimately build it way out here on the far northwest side of San Antonio. You know, in the early 1960s, there were a lot more cows than people in this area. The hospital and a medical school, now called UT Health San Antonio, were completed in 1968. That first class of medical students was, I think, about 225 medical students. And then I think there were like 17 residents. Today, there are more than 700 resident physicians practicing at the school and across the network. The hospital has expanded by leaps and bounds. The latest phase of university's improvement started in 2008. The Robert B. Green Pavilion opened in 2013 and the Sky Tower a year later, each addition made to accommodate patients during their stay. Let's try to create an environment that is as, um, you know, patient friendly and, and warm and large enough for your family to come visit. Let's go to KSAT.com now to find out what's trending tonight with RJ Marquez. All right, Myra, interesting stories tonight on our website. And we start first uh, with some pretty cool news. The uh, the 2020 Warrior Games are going to be here, here or held in San Antonio next year. So this is pretty cool. Perfect place for them, right? Absolutely, Military yes. City USA. Military U U City USA, like you just said. I just think it's a really great way to showcase some of these uh, wounded warriors, wounded veterans, and kind of the, the just the competition aspect that they have and yeah. just the the intensity that they uh, take into uh, competing in these sports. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Something really cool to feature on our website. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's going to be next June, so uh, make sure to check out more information on our website, ksat.com. All right. All right. Uh, no easy way to transition to this <laughs> next story here because this is uh, definitely a bizarre one. So a Florida mom was arrested after she shared a viral video of her, ton of her daughter licking a tongue depressor at the uh, dentist's office and then putting it back. Why? Why? Why are people <laughs> licking things? Why is this now a thing people are doing? That's the thing is that um, I, I'm not sure why this happened. Obviously, there's been a lot of this copycat stuff going on based on the whole Bluebell incident. Yes, seen that it. viral video. Yeah. yeah. This mom said that she was just kind of messing around. She was just playing around with her kids that they had been waiting for a long time at the so office. Why so why put it back? <laughs> I, don't know. Well, I mean, why put it back? <laughs> I'm not sure, um, but uh, those are all really, really good questions, and I'm not even sure why this mom decided to also put this online, like on social media. So yeah, this is a uh, interesting story here. If you guys wanted more information, go to our website, ksat.com. Oh, all right. sheesh. Okay. 
Yes. Uh, last story here, and a lot of people are uh, pretty down about this. In fact, uh, a lot of people here in the newsroom reacting to this. Charming Charlie is uh, set to close all of its stores. All 261. Yes. Okay. So, uh, I, I have ahead. always liked Charming mm -hmm. Charlie, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not surprised, honestly. Yes. Every time I've gone in there, I haven't seen a lot of people. I think that's probably the biggest reason. Uh, also, people commenting online. Obviously, there's a lot of the. Uh, you can now buy a lot of stuff online. Of course. Amazon and yeah. everything like that. So, so uh, yeah, they're expected to uh, close all of their stores by the end of August. So, oh if wow, a, so that's happening pretty that's soon. Pretty soon. Yeah. 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 So if you're a fan, hit up Charming Charlie's. Maybe they got some good sales hey. going on. Yeah, go. going yeah. out of business sale. <laughs> um, so yeah, for that, all that story and more information, go to our website, ksat.com. All right, yeah. thanks, RJ. All right, thanks, Martin. We'll be right back. Weeknights, streaming live, KSAT News at 9, cutting edge, live from the newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. A new kind of KSAT. Now let's turn to the 9 at 9 tonight. The day's most interesting stories in just three minutes. Expect information you can put into action. Money, it's personal. Adulting hacks. What's trending online? We're talking about it. And expect some spree thoughts. A curiosity that sometimes gets me in trouble, Myra. KSAT News at 9 on your KSAT app. 15 times a day he would have a fit. Prior to brain balance, my son was very much unable to focus. Diagnosed with ADHD or a processing problem? Discover Brain Balance. Brain Balance delivers on the promise of a better life for your child and your family. As we went through our first month, huge things started to happen. There was major growth in her fine motor skills. It's been an amazing transformation. Give your child the foundation they need to succeed in school. Call Brain Balance today. Right now, one of the big crazes in our industry right now is the adjustable beds. Adjustable beds give you the ability to raise your head and your feet, giving you more of a zero gravity feel, which means basically taking the pressure points away. Cantwell Mattress Company is one of the largest manufacturers of adjustable beds in South Texas. We actually build our own adjustable beds and offer them straight to our clients at a better price than any of our competition out there. You can't well sleep without a Cantwell Mattress. Kickapoo Lucky Eagle Casino Hotel. It's only a short drive from home. Over 3,300 slots, poker, and live bingo. I come for the drinks. It's a great place to celebrate. Come and play. That's all our time tonight. Thanks so much for watching the news at 9. I'm Myra Arthur. Good night.